President Trump's new chief of staff, John Kelly, is just three days on the job, and expectations are already high that he will stop the recent churn at the top in the White House and mend fences with Congress following the failure of health care reform. We explore all that and more with Corrine Jean-Pierre, a veteran of the Obama administration, and Barry Bennett. He was a senior advisor to the Trump presidential campaign. And welcome to both of you. Thank you for, for being uh, with us again. Corrine, I'm going to start with you. General John Kelly, he's been on the job three days. Yes. Has everything changed? Well, I think three days is not a pattern for, for Donald Trump. I think maybe in three weeks, then we can look back to see if he's if John Kelly could hold up to uh, to his distinguished career and, and being that general that he is and bringing everything together. But I, I don't have a lot of confidence in that. Many people have tried uh, before John Kelly and have failed. And you really just can't change the man by changing staff. It just is not going to work with Donald Trump. He doesn't want to be, to be managed. He doesn't want to be. He wants to be his own chief of staff, his own communications director, and his own chief, uh, chief counsel. What do you see, Barry Bennett? Well, I think that if his mission were to change Donald Trump, that would probably be a failure in the end. I think his mission, though, is to make Trump better. Uh, you know, every every player needs a coach. Uh, this White House team has needed a coach for for six months, frankly, and I hope that he is that that good coach that they need, an enforcer, systems, rules, processes, all matter. And he seems, this first three days, I know it's a short time to judge him, <laughs> but I'm pretty excited about those three days. Well, there are a few little reports coming out of the White House, Kareen. Uh, apparently the door to the Oval Office, mm -hmm. which was open to just about everybody, or many, is now closed. There's some, some discipline there. And we're also noticing the president isn't tweeting as much. Now it's only three days. Three days. days. <laughs> but, uh, but maybe he's having some effect. I, 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 we have to see. I mean, three days is pretty low bar. He is the president of the United States, and we're, we're, we're saying, oh, yay, three days. Um, I, it just doesn't, it just hasn't been Donald Trump's pattern. Um, we haven't seen that in the past. There's been many pivots. Even when Rance Priebus came into, uh, came into the office as chief of staff, people thought, oh, there goes, there goes a pivot. When his family moved into the White House, oh, there goes a pivot. That's going to calm him down. And it never has worked. So we'll see. Is there, is, is there some secret formula that we haven't seen staff try or, or someone try? I mean, Barry Bennett, one of the things that was said about General Kelly is he's closer to being a peer yeah. of, of mm. President Trump's. He's yeah. a general. He's great had a great uh, career in the military. Yeah. I th you know, I think that the, uh, in, in my time in the campaign, um, if you give him a plan that he buys into, he executes. Uh, I just don't think that they were very successful at creating a plan that he was willing to buy into and execute. When so, you say they, you mean? The staff. Um, but I think, you know, for instance, you know, if I were General Kelly, and I'm not, thank goodness, but uh, um, give him some things to tweet about. Have a plan about what happens after you tweet. You know, here's an idea. Tweet the White House switch or switch the congressional switchboard number. Uh, turn the calls on. There are all kinds of things that they could be doing that they're not. And I hope that General Kelly you know, orchestrates a new plan. Well, meanwhile, Corrine, what we were talking about earlier with uh, Lisa Desjardins and Nick Schifrin is about the divide between the White House and the Congress over some pretty important matters. Uh, Lisa was talking about health care, how the president has said just let the Affordable Care Act implode. Some in Congress are trying to do something uh, to to regenerate health care reform. And then Nick uh, Schifrin talking about the divide over the Russia sanctions, yeah. the president hates it, he signed it, but doesn't like it. I think, Judy, if you are a Republican sitting on the Hill in the House or the Senate, or if you're a Republican sitting in any red state, you would look and expect that you have the control, control of, both, of three branches, that you would be able to get things done, major pieces of legislation. And that just hasn't happened under this White House. So I think that's pretty troubling for Republicans and anybody who is following all of this and cares about their country, if you're you know, in the Republican Party. So that is troubling. And also on the bipartisanship, I think it's great. I think it's a great start for them to try and figure out a solution. But if the leaders aren't there, if Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan aren't there, it's just not going to happen. And they are still have on the, on the, on the table full repeal. And you can't get anywhere if you're still talking about 
taking away health care from millions of people. One of the questions this raises in my mind, Barry Bennett, is how much clout does this president have mm -hmm. with this, uh, with his, his party in the Congress? After the failure of the health care reform bill, they spent months trying to make this happen. It hasn't worked yet. Yeah. Uh, are they, do they, do they care what the president says to them? Well, to the Congress, I have no idea. Um, unfortunately for the Congress, um, they proved all the Trump voters were right about Congress, right? That Washington is broken and they can't do anything. Congress hasn't solved a serious problem in quite a long time. Uh, so to that extent, his base, the Republican Party is pretty much as a majority, uh, was proven right that Congress is broken. Um, you know, as the uh, problem escalates, and we're now seeing, you know, rates, as you just reported, rates are rising across the country. There are 19 counties in Ohio uh, that don't have a, don't have a provider. Uh, California is, is coming down. As the problems get bigger and bigger, hopefully more and more people will get serious, and we can come to some kind of bipartisan solution. But up until now, there's been a total unwillingness for the two sides to work together. And, you know, frankly, the, the Republican caucus in the Senate couldn't even come together. Well, Congress did come together to, to pass these sanctions against Russia, which yeah. the president's unhappy with. So. Well, I think, I think any president would be fairly unhappy with uh, the Congress not giving him his right to lift sanctions, or taking away the ability to lift sanctions after some kind of negotiation. Uh, so, you know, as, as someone who uh, believes in the power in the office of the presidency, I have a problem with that. Um, I, understand, I understand politically why they did it, but I don't think that it helps the power of the presidency to do that. I was going to ask you about something else the president said this week, and that is handling police suspects. Kareem, we're just about out of time. I know uh, that has caused a lot of pushback. The president basically saying, don't worry about these suspects when you shove them into the car. Don't worry about their head. It's very, it's very troubling and, uh, and concerning what the, the, the president said. He has to understand, as long as he's in the Oval Office, his words are going to have a lot of weight. And no, if, if you've been watching Donald Trump for the last two years, for decades, you know that he was not joking. You know that he was very serious about what he was saying. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Corinne Jean-Pierre, Barry Bennett, Thanks, thank you. Thanks, Judy.